Hey, this is Belinda with Willow Birch and Clover. Welcome back. Boy, I'm batting a thousand today. I'm going to do a second tutorial. I have been wanting to get these tutorials done for quite some time, and I've got time today. I'm going to do it. Um, this tutorial is going to be on how I achieve this aged, do you see the, um, it looks like water damaged book cloth on top of this cover. It's very easy to do and um, super simple, and it gives an aged look because I believe, you know, there's a difference between making a vintage style junk journal that looks like it's supposed to be old and making one that looks old. And that gift is in the details. So you have to pay attention to things like the look of the fabric. Does the fabric look old and worn? Um, does it, you know, what I'm saying? You don't want it to look like it's supposed to be old. You want it to look old. So we're gonna work on achieving this look right here. And when I finish, I'm not the best tutorial maker, so if there are any questions, please feel free to post them below in the comments, and I'll be glad to answer any questions that you have. All right, what we're gonna need to achieve that look is your book. And to simulate the first step, I'm just going to use a piece of chipboard and we're going to pretend that this is my book cover that I am ready to apply the fabric to. And you're going to need some fabric. And for this technique, you want thin fabric. This little square fabric here comes in different colors. I mean, you can use any color, but I'm just showing you this because this is one that I just opened. It, you get it at Walmart around there by the fabric. Um, section and it comes folded up it's by the little quilting squares and everything it's a cotton fabric and it is super super thin if i held this up to the light i could almost see through it but that's what we need to achieve the look that we're going after today so the first step is this is a piece of fabric that was just like that and i coffee stained it um, the reason why i coffee stained my fabric first is because even after i apply the next step this aged look will come through um, and you could even go back and add more coffee stain when you finish. The grungier, the better. So <clears throat> what we're going to do for this first step, you're going to need your book cover board, your fabric that you're going to cover your book in, and you're going to need some, I use Fabri-Tac glue, okay? It dries quickly, and it, I know that it does this look that I'm wanting because the fabric is thin. I imagine, you know, any glue might work. But Fabri-Tac, once it's on here, it's, it becomes kind of waterproof, and that's important for our next step. You're going to put this on like you're going to, you know, lay your book cover down to cover it with fabric. Now, this is important, what I'm doing here. I know you think this is wasteful, but you need some gobs of glue. Do you see how I've gobbed it in a, a couple of places? See how thick that is right there? That's important, okay? Now, once I have that... I'm gonna take my piece of fabric and put it on my book like I want it. And here's another important part. Start mashing down, and you want some wet spots created by the glue, just like that. Any other time, that would be, oh my God, I've ruined it. But for this technique, this is necessary, okay? You want the glue to show through and wet spots just like that. Now, I'm gonna to go to this step. You're gonna let that dry. This is actually a book cover. This was a Reader's Digest. I use these a good bit in making this size journals because I like the size and I believe in recycling. Why would I wanna landfill a book when the cover's perfectly usable? One thing I will say about the Reader's Digest, sometimes they have beautiful papers on the front covers and sometimes not so much. Since this fabric is thin, and you're gonna be able to see through it. If I use a book, um, like a Reader's Digest that has a paper cover on it, I paint it first. And I just spray paint mine outside. Actually, my 11-year-old son does them for me. They don't have to be perfect, but I just spray paint them enough that it covers up the pattern if the pattern's not pretty, and I don't want that to show. Now, what I've done is I applied glue thickly and laid the entire book down and pressed down like this all over, even on the spine, like just like I'm gonna cover it um, the entire book, you know, and that goes back to that's what we were doing here. That's what I was simulating with this little piece. Okay, so this is on here. Now the next thing I'm gonna need is some paint. 
you can use acrylic paint, you um, and you can use chalk paint. I've used both, and I like the chalk paint the best because it is a matte finish. It looks old and vintage. You don't have any, have to do anything to it to make it look kind of grungy. So this is Waverly. I got this at Walmart, but you can get chalk paints anywhere now. Hobby Lobby, Walmart, Michaels, Joann's probably even has a selection of them. I don't have a Joann's anywhere near me, so that's why I don't know. But I took a cup and I used this old mixing cup to show you it's clear. About a fourth a cup of water just over and I used about a teaspoon of the paint. And what I've done is I've made a paint wash and I just stir it around with my brush. And this is where you get to have fun, okay? You're gonna take that and you're gonna begin to coat the fabric. Just like this. Just paint it as if, well, you are painting it to put on a book, but just, you want it covered. Just remember that, that you want it covered in paint. What you're gonna notice as you're painting, let me get on the spine here, and I'm very messy with my painting, so just, you know, you don't have to be this sloppy. <laughs> but I enjoy it. Therapy without paying a therapist. So, and what you'll begin to notice is that where you put that glue is not um, really getting covered by the paint, no matter how dark or whatever you put on it. So anyway, I've covered it, I've saturated it, and there we go. Now, let me get my heat gun and show you the magic, okay? Well, well, hang on just a second, I am unplugged. Bear with me. Okay, okay, we're back in business. I don't have any more props ready, so we're just gonna keep rolling. I'm not gonna start over. But anyway, once that glue is dry, this is why it's important that you use the Fabri-Tac because the Fabri-Tac is not gonna come up on you like another water-soluble glue will. Fabri-Tac, after it dries long enough, can be washed and dried lightly. So, I'm gonna dry this section to show you. You can see the coffee stain coming through that I had on there before too. That's why I like to coffee stain the fabric before I put it on here because it adds to the markings. And I'm really trying to get some dry sections, but I think you can clearly see where the glue was where I've mashed it down really hard and you can control how much or how little you want that to happen. You know, do you want a lot that doesn't look like it's, you know, colored or you want it to look heavily water stained or do you want it to look like on this side for this part that I've gotten dry now, there'll be more as I go down because I really gobbed it on this one too. You see, those drops are very noticeable. That may be all you want on there. So you would only do a couple of gobs, but if you want it, really really grungy gobs of glue and press down hard all right we're drying we're drying and i'm going to stop right here i could really dry a little bit more and i will in just a second but i want to show you this let me grab my bottle of tea stain i have some tea stain right here okay right on top of it and we go back to drying. And see it's picking up some of the stain. And that's good, that's what you want. You want this to look like something you found in the attic of an abandoned home. That's what I always say. That's my goal for my books. Like I opened a trunk in an old abandoned attic and voila, I found an old, old book. Okay, now that's not perfectly dry, but that's dry enough for you to get the gist of it. I'm let that cool just a second because anytime you use a heat gun like that, it is super hot. See, my fabric is still adhering, but look, look at the grunginess now. Can you see that? 
it looks old. If I want these spots colored a little darker, I can come back with coffee and put it right on the top, or I could use some Tim Holtz inks right on the top of those spots. The spots will still show through, but they will look really aged, and I hope you can see the deliciousness that it gives that cover, the grunginess. So that's it. Quick, simple, easy, and you've got a 100-year-old book cover. Um, leave any comments or questions below, and thanks for watching. Bye-bye.